I was used to feeling the wind on my face, blowing through my hair. I was used to roaming wherever I wanted, doing whatever I pleased. Being trapped in a prison cell drove me wild. I raged and screamed that I shouldn't be there. It weren't right and it weren't fair. I tried to do the right thing and buy the shawl, honestly. But the woman in the shop said she wouldn't sell to gypsies. My mar was sick. It was cold. I needed it. I shouldn't have been arrested for taking it. And James certainly shouldn't have been. He was just defending me as any good husband would. And then they separated us. The smallpox broke out soon after we got to prison. It was brutal. Night after night, sweating, tossing and turning in my bed, sweating through my sheets. My lips cracked and my skin ravaged. I wanted to die. Most people didn't survive it, but I was one of the lucky ones that did. But I was more one worried about James. He didn't have a strong constitution like I did. I needn't have worried too much though. They hanged him before he had a chance to catch it. And I didn't even get to say goodbye. I woke up well and clear headed for the first time in weeks to realize I'd be facing life alone. And I've never felt a fear like that before. The weeks after James's death passed by in a blur. I was still weak. I could think of nothing but grieving my lost husband and my lost life. Until I was moved to another cell. Our jailer, a man called Solomon Wisdom, liked to shuffle us around. He was worried about us getting too friendly with one another. And he was right to worry. Rebecca Hall was a small girl, but not a quiet one. She wouldn't stop talking about the injustice of her punishment, about the baby kicking inside her belly, and about her husband, who was outside the prison. He grated on me when all I wanted to do was sleep. I had no interest in hearing about her husband when mine was gone. I had no interest in anything. But it weren't in my nature to stay idle for long. My mind woke up unbidden and a plan started forming. James might be dead, but my ma might not be. And if there was any chance of seeing her again, I had to take it. Outside, I stayed dull and vacant, but my mind whirred. Thanks to Solomon Wisdom's drink-rotted mind, the cell that he'd put me and Rebecca in was on the ground floor and had a little window. The thought of being away from Rebecca's chatter was welcome. But one night she came to me, crying, begging and pleading, asking me to promise that I'd look after her child if she died giving birth. Well, I weren't gonna make a promise I couldn't keep. So he unlatched her clutching fingers, told her what I had in mind instead. That night, it was rainy and cold as death. The wind screamed against the prison walls. Solomon Wisdom had fallen into one of his gin-soaked sleeps. <laughs> I recognized the snores. It was time. I quickly woke Rebecca and we gathered our few belongings and as quietly as we could moved our bench to just below the window. I gave Rebecca a leg up and she managed to slip through the window and jump down to the ground with ease. I hoisted myself up to the ledge. I was bigger than Rebecca even though I was still thin from sickness. I started trying to push myself through the, through the hole. It was tight and I bruised and scratched myself on my way out. But eventually... I landed onto the wet ground and saw Rebecca standing there. I'd half expected her to take off without me. <laughs> I would have done if I'd gone first. But there she was. She'd waited for me after all. And then we ran. <sighs> Faster than I could have imagined it. Through the grounds, through the city, and by dawn we were making our way into the countryside. <laughs> I can never put into words the feeling of that day. After running in the rain all night, to see the dawn rising and the rain stop. The October wind on our cold faces was the most wonderful feeling you can imagine. The next few weeks passed in a blur of hunger and desperate hope. 
We ran and we sheltered, and we tried to catch any news of our kin. It was in our third month of freedom that we found ourselves outside a village called Tetsworth. There we learned the news of our family, and it weren't the news we'd have been hoping for. Rebecca's husband had run off and was nowhere to be found. And my Mara was dead. Rebecca and I clung to one another, to my surprise. We were the only people we had left in the world. But our grief and pain made us lethargic and careless. And soon we were recaptured. For the next year, I stayed quiet. I kept myself docile and quiet. I did what was the task assigned to me. And I behaved myself. But I hadn't forgotten that the rest of the world was out there. After feeling the sun on my face again, I knew I needed to be free. Permanently. I behaved myself, I towed the line. But only on the outside. When I heard that the infamous highwaymen John Jones and Robert Thacker had been taken to a room near the 6L, I knew this could be my chance. I knew who they were, and there was a chance they knew my name too. I gathered myself quite a bit of attention being the first female prisoner ever to escape the prison. I started putting on a show, refusing food, convulsing in a fever and making myself vomit. Well, after the other prisoners started complaining, Solomon Wisdom couldn't ignore me anymore and he had me sent to the sick wing. While I was there, I managed to get the attention of Jones and Thacker. They knew who I was, and they were just as hungry for freedom as I. The night it happened was freezing, cold as death. It was early January and the snow had been falling for about a month. I'd been instructed by Thacker and Jones to take all the bedclothes and material I'd been able to find and tie it together to form one long rope. Somehow, they'd managed to weaken the lock on my cell door, and on the night, I was to break out and go and release them. Their own cell was much more heavily secured. All they told me about when it would be was that I'd know when it was time. Now that night, Solomon fell into one of his sleeps again, when suddenly he began to cough and slumped over on his stool. This was it. It had to be. I quickly gathered my things and the makeshift rope, and began working on my on my door at first nothing and i thought the men had tricked me i wouldn't put it past them but then it gave and i was out together we climbed to the top to the top of the old tower the two men brought out ropes similar to mine and tied together they looked almost nearly long enough we worked away at the bricks our fingers cold and then bleeding until we had a hole big enough to get through Thacker went first, and I looked out after him. The drop was terrifyingly long, and our makeshift rope pitifully insubstantial to the task at hand. There was a muffled cry. Thacker caught himself in one of the spikes that topped the prison walls. He'd done a poor job of swinging himself over, but eventually he dropped to the ground and out of sight. I was quite sure there'd be no one waiting for me at the bottom this time. I took a deep breath and stepped out into the empty air. I've never been more scared in my life than faced with that drop. My fingers were shaking. My feet slipped and skidded on the wet stones as I tried to find a foothold. Somehow I made it to the top of the tower wall. I could see myself on those spikes, impaled, torn, left to bleed out like a netted bird. But somehow I swung myself over. My forehead was sweating despite how cold the night was. When I landed in the snow at the base of the tower, I could barely get back on my feet. Thacker had taken off, obviously. It was no surprise when Jones went, took off after him. And then I was free. I didn't have any sense of direction or where I should go. I just knew that I needed to get as far away from the prison as possible or I'd be recaptured. I didn't trust villages. I stuck to fields and open roads. I sheltered in barns where I could and under bushes where I could not. 
but I was growing weak. The cold was taking over my body. My depleted energy was leaving me quickly. One morning, I was climbing down from a hayloft I'd been sheltering in, and I slipped and lost my footing. The ground came up towards me and I don't remember anymore until I opened my eyes and I knew immediately where I was. I was in the prison sick wing. I'd been recaptured. All I could do was cry. My last chance at freedom had gone. Two chances of escape was unheard of. A third would surely be impossible. I lost all hope at that point. My spirit felt broken. I recovered in body, but not in my mind. And Solomon Wisdom, he was angry and humiliated by my escapes. And he weren't afraid of letting that be known. I knew that this was it. I'd be here for the rest of my life, however long or short that would be. Until one morning in March, over a year after my last escape and recapture, Solomon Wisdom left my cell door unlocked. Everyone knows, third time's the charm. <laughs>